Hi, this video is to help you understand how to find out what a coterminal angle is and uh, what a reference angle is. So the definition of a coterminal angle is it's any angle that's the same as the angle that you're looking for. So uh, essentially what that means is that as you go around your xy coordinate plane, you, you might have one angle right here. So let's say this angle is, is, is 45 degrees. Now, while this angle is 45 degrees, there's an identical angle that, uh, not quite identical, but just a little bit different that'll end up in the same place. And the way you get to that angle is you either add 360 or you subtract 360 from 45. 360 represents a full circle. So if we were to go all the way around here, uh, this angle would also end up in the same spot. As you can see, I'm gonna draw a line right over that one would be in the same place. Um, but instead of having a degree uh, an angle of 45 degrees, it would have an angle of 360 plus 45, which would give us uh, 405. Alternatively, alternatively, we can do something similar. If, if I take 450, I'm sorry, 45, and I subtract 360 degrees, I would come up with uh, negative 315. And the angle negative 315, let's do this in a, um, this color right here would also end up in the exact same place as the angle of 45. So the way to define coterminal angles is that a coterminal angle is equal to whatever the angle measure is. So I'm, I'm going to say x represents the angle measure uh, plus 360 times n, where n is an integer value. And if you've forgotten the definition of an integer, it simply just means um, any whole number, positive or negative or zero. So uh, something like you know negative two, negative one, zero, two, and three. These all represent integer values. So if you want to figure out um, any kind of coterminal angle, you can just use this formula here and simply plug in any integer value to it. Negative two, negative one, uh, zero would give you the same angle. 2, 3, 1, you know, uh, any number you want will give you different coterminal angles. So there are infinite coterminal angles. Now what about a reference angle? So reference angles are a little bit trickier to find. Um, and the reference angle can be thought of as the uh, angle between the x-axis and whatever your angle is. So I know that's a little bit confusing. But I'm saying angle a lot. And your angle. So maybe if I draw a picture, take you through an example, it'll become just a little bit more clear. This is your xy coordinate plane. Uh, now, let's say you had an angle in the four, first quadrant right here. Let's say that was your angle. Well, your reference angle is gonna be the same thing as the angle in the four, first quadrant because it's just from here to here. So if this represents zero and this represents whatever your degree is, I'm gonna put a number in here just to make it a little bit more concrete. Let's say this is 60. Well, then then your, your reference angle would just be 60. It would just be the difference between the x-axis, which here uh, in the first quadrant, you think of it as zero, and the angle, which in this case we put 60. Now let's say you're in the second quadrant. What are you gonna do if your angle is in the second quadrant? Well, in the second quadrant, let's pick an angle in there to, to help make this a little bit more clear. Your angle might be, oh, I don't know, 150 degrees. That would lie within the second quadrant. So what is my distance between this angle here and the x-axis? Well, the closest x-axis, the closest I can get to it is here. So we know that a full line all the way around from uh, here all the way through to here would be 180 degrees. We should know that from our geometry class. So if part of this is 150 and the whole thing is 180, then we can figure out what this angle is in blue by doing 180 minus 150. So that would equal 30 degrees. Uh, so if you're a little bit confused, I'm going to come back and kind of solidify these rules. Um, uh, but for now, just try to try to see how the angle I'm looking for is always the angle that's made with the x-axis. Let's say I wanted to do something in quadrant 3. So quadrant 3 would be down here. 
and an angle that might lie in quadrant three might be the angle uh, 240 degrees. So what's the distance between this angle and the x-axis? Well, we can see that this is closest to the x-axis right here. And the x-axis would be 180. So if I, if I take, let's do a different color here. Let's say this line segment is 180, plus this line segment right here would give us 240. Uh, shouldn't call them line segments. I should be saying an arc. So if I want to figure out what my, my reference angle is, I would do uh, 240 minus 180, which would give me uh, 60 degrees. So there the reference angle would be 60 degrees. Um, if I'm in the fourth quadrant, let's do this example right here. So let's say I do maybe 315. Uh, well, the closest I can get to the x-axis would be this part right here. Draw in a different color would be that part right there. So I know if I'm going all the way around the circle, that's 360 degrees. So just going this far around it being 315, and then this little extra piece here would have to be 360 minus 315, or 45 degrees. Okay, so that's that's kind of to give you a little visual. I know that might be confusing. I'm going to do some more examples um, when, when I start the next video. But for now, let me try to give you uh, kind of a, a systematic way to think about it. So I'm going to go ahead and just erase all this here. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Go ahead and get rid of all that there. Let's just make it clean. Okay, so let's get some basic rules depending upon where our angle is. So I first just wanna jog your memory of what your quadrantal angles are. So, so this is a quadrantal. Anything that's on the positive or negative axis or the positive y or negative y axis, so on either axis. This would be zero degrees. This would be 90 degrees. This would be 180 degrees, uh, 270 degrees, and then you come back around to 360 degrees over here. Uh, in case you've forgotten your quadrants, this is quadrant one. So anything between zero and 90 is quadrant one. Anything between 90 and 180 is quadrant two. Anything between 180 and 270 is quadrant three. And anything between 270 and 360 would represent quadrant four. Now each of these quadrants has its own set of rules for defining the reference angle. Um, and this only holds true if the angle is between zero and 360. So if your angle is outside of that range or if it's a negative, it's gonna be a little bit different. But this should hold true for most problems that you're gonna see. In quadrant one, your, uh, whatever your angle is, is your reference angle. So if I have 60 degree angle, my reference angle is 60. If I have a, a 75 degree angle, my reference angle is 75. So your angle is equal to your reference angle. In quadrant two, well, the closest x-axis is 180 degrees. So your reference angle would equal 180 degrees minus whatever your angle is. Quadrant three, your reference angle would equal your angle minus 180 degrees uh, because in quadrant three you've gone to 180 and then you've gone a little bit past it and the amount that you've gone past it represents your reference angle so if you if you take away 180 from your your actual angle uh, that would that would give you that value and in quadrant four your reference angle is going to equal 360 minus your angle. Now these rules only hold true if your angle, which I'm going to define as theta, uh, is somewhere between 0 and 360, which will be most cases in your pre-calc class. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get into more complicated types of problems in the next video. But for now, I want you to go ahead and write down these rules, and I want you to try to use these rules to solve the problems that I'm going to give you next.